Hello there, my name is Corporal Jake Pugsley. Uh, I am part of the Rifles Regiment Support Team South, uh, based out of Woolwich. I am going to give you the Rifles Regiment of History presentation I have made. Uh, the reason why is because one, I've been asked to, uh, and two, uh, if it is delivered over YouTube where you can constantly access it, uh, it just then makes it easier for if you wish to make your own or if you wish to use this at any point. Uh, if you have any comments on this, please feel free to add to the co uh, add to the comments at the bottom either on Twitter or on YouTube uh, or even on Instagram. And yeah, let me know what you think of it. Uh, by all means, let me know if you feel that I've missed anything or I could cov cover anything better. Okay, so let's crack on. So there you see the rifles family tree now we date back to as far as 1685 under the duke of bedfort regiment and they was part of the devonshire regiment uh later on Devon, uh, devonshire and dorset uh devonshire and dorset light infantry um but really the idea of riflemen uh come in 1800 if you look at the bottom line, uh, furthest to the left, 1800, Experimental Corps of Riflemen. Uh, that's where the idea of the rifleman was fully developed into an actual core, um, an actual idea. Um, we had some bits and bobs beforehand, which I'll go on to, but this was when it was all thrown together, and this is the first uh, British regiment of riflemen. So our founding father is this gentleman here. He come up with a concept of rif uh, riflemen. Uh, we still follow a lot of what was said uh, back then uh, by this man. And we do our best to follow, uh, follow it as best we can. And this gentleman's name is Sir John Moore. It now falls to these gentlemen here to keep what we have had in the past in the rifles. So on the furthest left, you have uh, General Sir Nick Carter, who is uh, currently the head of the armed forces. Um, he was our previous Colonel Commandant. He was our second Colonel Commandant. In the middle, you have His Royal Highness, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, who is our Colonel in Chief. And then on the furthest right hand side, you have our new Colonel Commandant, General uh, Sir Patrick Saunders. So, the history of the regiment. If you've got a uh, full chance to look, uh, you see on the Rifles reg uh, Regimental Tree, we were formed out of four founding regiments on the 1st of February 2007. And these four founding regiments are the four glorious cat badges here. First one being the Devonshire and Dorset Light Infantry. Second one, we're all Gloucestershire, Berkshire and Wilkeshire Light Infantry. The Royal Green Jackets. And the Light Infantry. They was our four founding regiments. With histories of their own. Spanning hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, but we're going to concentrate on what the rifles have now. So when we formed, um, we had the concept of golden threads. And what them golden threads are, 
is they are threads from our past uh, founding regiments. Um, bugle horn to the incoming chain and whistle. Uh, and we're going to go further into this and have a bit more of an explanation on where each one comes from um, and the history behind it. So, the bugle horn. From the light infantry, uh, this was the symbol of the light infantry, the 95th wore this on their uh, headdress as well. Um, just minus the crown, they had a knot above it, the light infantry. Um, the oxen bucks had the knot, but also had a crown above it. Uh, sorry, council. No, they didn't. It was the 95th that had that. Uh, so, this cat badge has been around for many, many years. And the bugle is the symbol of the light infantry. Now, this is worn on the front of all of our headdresses. Uh, as you can see, in the middle, you have a um, side hat, uh, effectively known as the Thunderbirds, uh, Thunderbirds hat. And you have uh, the boss of a Shaco uh, that the band and bugles wear when they are doing their business. So the back badge was um, part of the Royal Gloucestershire Berkshire and Wilkeshire Light Infantry. Uh, before them, the Gloucestershire Regiment. It was awarded to them during the Battle of Alexandria, or after the Battle of Alexandria, 1801. Uh, a young second left, uh, a young lieutenant uh, ordered his rear rank to about face to uh, fight a oncoming uh, enemy flanking attack. Uh, first time that this anything like this, this initiative uh, had been done. Um, so they were awarded two cap badges, so it looked like they was facing both directions uh, at all times. Uh, they was the only regiment ever to be awarded two gap badges, uh, and we are the only regiment to ever wear two um, cap badges. Black buttons. So black buttons come from the Royal Green Jackets. Uh, the black buttons, you'll see there's four different variants there, and there is more variants for uh, different things. But... You, even with our um, our dress shirts and everything like that, we will wear black buttons. Um, this is to represent what the 95th had uh, and the King's Rifle Corps had when they had uh, lead buttons, um, then ball buttons on the furthest right-hand side. What would then happen is that the uh, if they run out of ammunition, they would take this off and use it as ammunition to continue to fight to, uh, to fight towards the enemy. The Cross de Gras, Cross of War, translated in English. Um, it is worn on our ceremonial uniforms and our mess dress. Uh, it was awarded to the Devonshire Regiment for the action at Boinder Butts in World War One, 27th May 1918. Uh, what happened is there was a German attack at Boyne de Butts. The Devonshire Regiment held them off and sustained 90% of casualties. Uh, so the unit was awarded the uh, Cross de Gras. Also, a less, no uh, less known one, the uh, King, King Shropshire Light Infantry was also awarded this in 19 uh, 1918 at the action at Bindley Hill. Uh, although the light infantry gave up wearing this in 1968. The Maltese Cross. Now the Maltese Cross comes from the... There you can see very clearly the 37 battle honours that are held on uh, the cross belt. Uh, these 37 battle honours were selected due to the... Uh, importance historical importance of them if you look in the bottom right hand corner uh the very bottom right hand of the maltese cross you'll see that there's a blank space now this blank space is there ready for the next battle honor um and always will have a space income and chain and whistle so during um Crimean War, uh, the Battle of Inkman, 1854, 
uh, sergeants and officers wore the uh, Inkerman chain and whistle. Uh, and during the Battle of Inkerman, all officers were uh, sustained as casualties. So the sergeants actually kept the attack going due to the terrain and the weather. They couldn't see each other. So this was commonly used as a communication device, but they basically directed the whole attack and won the battle just using whistles and bugles as communication devices. The customs of the regiment. This is only a few uh, few select customs. If you'd like to know more, please let me know, and I will uh, make a presentation on it. So, Baker rifle, not a musket. So, we was the first regiment to use rifles. We got the idea from uh, when we used the German hunters during the Seven Year War, or Lower Countries, is what they uh, what they referred to in the books. Um, but yeah, so we see we brought the Baker rifle in. Now the Baker rifle wasn't as long as the, uh, as the musket, so then when we needed to fill in the line, um, and create like fill in the spaces in the line, we would have to attach a sword. Now the Baker rifle sword was of sword length; it was over seventeen and a half inches. Uh, so when we refer to the uh, SA80 sword now is out of tradition uh, and custom. We understand it's not a sword. We understand it's not the length of a sword, but it's a continuing custom. The way we spell sergeant uh, is only slightly different. Instead of a G, it's a J. Uh, with a G in French, it means servant. With J uh, in French, it means leader, and our ser our sergeants are leaders of men. Still, we use a bugle and not a drum. Uh, this will be further uh, to taken further a bit later, but we uh, we use a bugle instead of a drum. No colours or standards are. Battle honours are entrusted to each individual rifleman on their belt and their cro uh, and their cross belts. The reason we don't have colours or standards is due to being skirmishers. Um, carrying around a massive flag would be a massive giveaway cutting around the, uh, cutting around the Napoleonic battlefield. We don't toast to the Queen. So when we don't toast to the Queen, what I mean is we don't stand up and toast to the Queen. Um, we stand up toast to the colonel in chief, uh, to the regiment, but we don't stand up and toast, uh, toast to the queen. This goes back to the battle, uh, battle of Copenhagen when we was on the ships. Uh, so the Royal Navy, they don't stand up when they're on the ship because obviously the deck's too low. Uh, so they would literally um, sit down and toast to the queen. And that's exactly the same as what we do. Same reason uh, we play Charlie Revalli or Naval Revalli instead of the normal army rails is because we kept that custom and tradition. Swift and bold, uh, in Latin, cella actus. Now this is given to us by General uh, General James Wolfe, uh, who led the Battle of Quebec. He is buried in Greenwich, London. Uh, there's a statue of him up on Greenwich Hill in London. Uh, he awarded this to the 60th American, or Kingswell Rifle Corps. Um, for their actions there and you can still say it counts today um, the riflemen all riflemen I believe are very swift in how they deal with things uh, how they problem solve we swiftly move through things very different to others I feel and boldness, you can't argue with you can't argue with a rifleman's boldness. Uh, if a rifleman thinks that this ain't wrong, they should have no problem in piping up and saying. Uh, same with their actions, um, and actions always speak louder than words. They're very bold in what they do and how and how they do it. Uh, and I see this all the time, all the time in my small little team when I go uh, when I go to reserve units. Uh, when I see the lads, it is, uh, we are 
bold. Word of command and marching pace. So those of you that know heavy drill understand to get a squad to come to attention, turn to the right and march, um, takes you exactly that amount to tell them to do that. Um, when the rifles do their drill, it's uh, very easy, clear, defined commands. Um, so for instance, to get a squad to turn to the right and march off, stand ready, which should bring them to position of brace, move to the right, quick march. They come to attention, turn to the right and step off. Um, for those of you that wish to know uh, rifles drill that don't already, I will be slowly making videos of it. Uh, I'm just trying to find perfect demo troops at the moment. So our regimental day, Battle of Sal uh, Salamanca, 22nd of July, 1812. I wouldn't be able to give it justice on this. Um, so if you want, I will make another presentation on the uh, Battle of Salamanca um, specifically. As I said, leave it in the comments. And then we have 437 individual battle honours. Now, it's not, if you get all the regiments and throw them into one box, uh, we would have 913. So you put all them battle honours individually on a bit of paper for each individual regiment, it's 913. But 53% of these battle honours are shared. So we was at the same place at the same time. So we've amalgamated them and we have 437 battle honours in total. It's a lot of battle honours. It's not just that, we also had 117 Victoria Crosses come from all four of our founding regiments. 117 Victoria Crosses, more than any one regiment has. Um, during the time of the Rifles, since uh, 2007, no one's been awarded a Victoria Cross. However, uh, what we have been awarded is 107 different medals for uh, gallantry. And it is madness. 31 military crosses, 51 mention, uh, mentioning dispatches, 10 distinguished service orders, four conspicuous gallantry, uh, conspicuous gallantry crosses, five Queen's gallantry medals. It is absolutely madness uh, on the bravery that some riflemen have thrown out there. And 107 for one regiment in in 13 years uh, very worthwhile so the definition of the rifles I think this is very clear cut and it tells you exactly uh, how as a, a cadet unit for instance you should look at operating um, I think this does the best it can um, to give you a clear cut view of what is expected when you have the name rifles in uh, your unit. The rifles is a forward looking infantry regiment relying on a mu uh, relying on mutual respect, self discipline, and a relentless desire for innovation. I I I think that is very clear cut and very easy to understand. The definition of a rifleman. The thinking, fighting man, regardless of rank, a rifleman demonstrates professional excellence, fighting spirit through self-discipline and initiative. It is a point of pride to say, I am a rifleman. And I do truly believe this, that every single person that wears a rifle's cap badge uh, should identify as rifleman. So, my, you know, for instance, uh, you cadets out there, you are Cadet Rifleman, you know, Jones, right? I'm Cadet Rifleman Jones. Um, anybody in the rifles, regular reserve, officer, soldier, we identify as rifleman first and foremost. When we're asked, I am a rifleman. So moving on to the bugle, which is a very, very important... Um, part of our regiment. Uh, 
the bugle has traditionally been used to pass communication with and to riflemen across the battlefield and in camp. The bugle was adopted for use in the 18th century. Um, you know, it took over the drum. Uh, the drum signal wasn't very clear, uh, where a bugle was very clear, very loud, and carries a note better. It was originally an ox bugle, um, but later made into a silver one, which gave a clearer note. So this is still continued today in the bugle platoons in the rifles, which are also assault pioneer platoons. Uh, the integral engineer support within a battalion. And it is carried forward in our daily calls. Now, this is only a few select calls. I know that some battalions have a lot more calls than this. Uh, I know that five rifles, I believe they do at least five more calls on top of this. Um, this is just a, 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 a set... A, 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 uh, a set template um, what to follow uh, of saying to follow sorry um, you know there is over 80 calls uh, God knows how many marches um, that can be played on the bugle and it's continued to be played on the bugle by abandoned bugles and by um, battalion buglers as well and I think this poem uh, very much sums up everything we've covered uh, in this presentation thus far. A rifle of a baker, a jacket of green, a sword not a bayonet, no toast to the queen. 140 per minute with rifles we trail, a salute at the double with bugles well. No colours, no musket, no drummer in sight. From Flanders to Helmand, the riflemen fight. Swift and bold, chosen men. Nice picture of a bugler there. I wonder who that is. Bit of a regimental uh, overview. We are the most operationally experienced and deployed regiment in the British Army. And that still remains now, today. A unique bond between all riflemen irrespective of rank. Eight battalions, five regular and three reserve, covering all the way from Edinburgh down. A full spectrum of infantry roles, light role, mechanised, armoured and specialised infantry. Uh, and we're based throughout the UK with riflemen drawn from the UK, the Commonwealth and the Republic of Ireland. And here you see uh, how we feel that the pillars of the regiment. So we've mentioned regulars and reserves, regular five battalions, um, reserves, uh, three battalions, cadets. The the army cadet force, uh, twenty six percent of the army cadet force, wears a rifles cap badge. And f or four four of the, four of them wear a king's Royal rifle corps cap badge. Um, twenty six percent of the army cadet force is part of our regiment. Uh, the associations. So that's all the former uh, regimental associations. Uh, and the Rifleman's Association now, and our communities, where we come from, the communities that support us in everything we do. Uh, you know, communities, you know, we go out to support our communities by doing the flood defences and everything like that, and they support us. I remember getting um, uh, welfare parcels uh, from random from random people across the UK uh, during my time in Afghanistan. So we do try our best to look after our communities and the communities do their best to look after us. So, British Army infantry roles. So that's how the infantry looks at this point in time. As you can see, across four out of five roles, we have a, at least one battalion in each one of them roles. One and two rifles in the light role infantry, uh, three in the mechanised, four in specialised infantry, and five in armoured. And as I said, we're spread across the UK. You'll see the red dots are where our regular battalions are, 
and then the little yellow dots are where a reserve unit is. You'll usually find that within the reserve unit there are there is a cadet unit, but you'll also see that there is cadet units. Uh, not all cadet units can be posted on this um, and be covered by all of this. So a quite widespread of where the rifles are. Thank you very much for taking your time to have a look at this uh, regimental history presentation. Um, I do hope this has covered what you expected it to cover. If it hasn't, leave it in the comments and I will go back over it uh, and readjust it. Um, I will, if anybody leaves a comment on doing the Battle of Salamanca, I will look into that as well. Um, please, by all means, uh, let us know what you think. Uh, thank you very much.